Whenever the cameras are ready, we're ready to rock and roll, okay. Uh, for everybody that's a uh, co-defensive coordinator, linebackers coach, uh, Kevin Scherr, uh, we'll open it right up for questions for coach. Kel? Obviously, you, you ended the spring with a couple guys dinged up, but it seems like you have your guys back healthy. Just how, how much has that helped with competition getting kind of going into pads now? Uh, it's been really good because, um, you know, as we get out there, you know, and they're kind of working through what they're trying to learn or, you know, technique or whatever, if it's not right, I'm going to fire them and put the other guy in there. So it creates that competition. Uh, which obviously makes people better. Uh, so it's been good to have them all out there. Really good. Have they been in pads long enough to get a, a better evaluation of what you've seen from them previously? Um, you know, um, probably not. Probably not. It's. Uh, I think really you don't really get a true assessment until you actually get to the at least the first scrimmage where it's more con, you know full contact. We do a lot of thud, tag off, things like that to protect both sides of the ball. Um, so there are plays that you're like, okay, I think you would make it, and I'm not sure. You you definitely know whether they make it in a scrimmage setting. So a lot of times we'll hold our complete reservation on on our, our decision or our thought process till we get past that. So, but it does help. It seems like you know everybody is new, right? Transfers, yeah. you, a lot of freshmen. Does that kind of help, though? Uh, everybody's kind of learning on the fly at the same um, time. Yeah, I think so in some ways. I mean, you'd you'd obviously always like to have old heads in there. You might say that can kind of at least take them and say, hey, here, you know, here's where you got to go for this or that. Here's what coach means when he says this, that, and the other. Uh, and we've got a little bit of carryover from the spring, um, but it's it's. In some ways, it is good to kind of wipe the board clean and start all over, and you know, start with fresh techniques, and you know. But um, sometimes, hopefully, this time next year, you've got guys that understand the system and what Coach Thack myself wants, things like that. So, Coach, I was just curious about Paul, Paul Myola. You guys added him mm -hmm. uh, in the summer, and just kind of what what you like about him, where you kind of see him fitting in with your group. Yeah, um, what I liked about him was the fact that, you know, obviously he's a mature guy. You know, he was at Notre Dame, grad transfer to Idaho, and has a year left for grad transfer here. So he brings some maturity into a room um, athletically, okay, really good athlete. Um, and then what I've seen from him so far is, you know, the first few days he's a quiet guy, and you can tell he knows what he's supposed to do. He's just trying to do it our way. Uh, now he's starting to become more comfortable with our way, and he's starting to show up a little bit more. So, um, you know, I'm excited about him. Like I said earlier, it's, you know, having you really, you know, four or five, six guys in the room that can compete for a position, that just makes it better because, you know, you can swap them out on a play and make a statement and let them sort it out by their play. You have a couple of returning guys in uh, – uh, Trinilius and, and also Tyson, one that has struggled with injuries. It's sort of slowed him up from getting on the field. The other has taken advantage when he's had a chance to start that type of thing. Where do you, where do you see them now in the scheme of things? You know, um, <clears throat> Trin's had a good spring, um, good fall to this point. Um, I think his his biggest thing too is is and we've talked to him about it is his his body weight to play that position. Not to be too heavy, but not to be too light, you know, kind of get that happy medium. I think that's going to be his biggest thing. And I think in the last six, eight months, he's really matured a lot. Uh, he's kind of gotten focused, recentered, and focused. You know, Tyson, you know, the injuries occurred before I got here. And I think, you know, since, since I've gotten here in the spring and this fall, he's done a really, really good job. So, you know, it's hard, to, again, hard to tell exactly where it's all going to shake out until we get past this first scrimmage. You know, guys show up in scrimmages where they didn't show up as much in the game and vice in, in, uh, practices and vice versa. So. Chad? I was just curious, you guys have some numbers. They haven't had that here in the past. Does that allow you to be maybe more multiple and – Match up more, maybe where you have play with a Sam at times, or, or not so strictly two linebacker all the time. Um, it does, you know, and and, and Coach Stack matches personnel, you know, regardless of wherever it is. And a lot of times the Sam comes out of the inside backer room, but uh, it does give us some options. Um, it does give us depth, uh, you know, and it's 
at the end of the day, you're, there, there are only so many reps you can get in a week to get prepared for a game with really so many reps. So sometimes that dictates what packages we have also. But it, but it does have to have those guys as long as, as, long as they stay healthy. You know. Rod, it seems like the linebacker position is one where they've, they've been a big help with special teams, play, yep. coverage, that type of thing. Uh, or Tyson got to speak with there. Do you see a lot of your guys? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of guys. I mean, it's, uh, you know, in any program, the linebackers have got to be versatile in that, you know, and then obviously if they ever have a chance to go to the next level, it's going to be really, really important. Um, probably more important than their linebacker play is their, is their special team's value. Um, so it does help um, once you get into a roster, you know, and you start cutting cutting the roster down to get into a travel roster, then then you got to sort through and figure out who's in the – you know, whatever the three deep, whatever it is, just to throw out a figure on that. Uh, and a lot of times that's the linebacker crew. You may get a few extras because of that, which may help you in packages and things too. Scott? Is there anything particularly you do? You have Dre and, and Braylon Oliver who have a lot of miles on them, relatively speaking, like for having played a lot right. of snaps in their career, a lot of practices. Do you gauge maybe what you do with them a little differently within some of the younger guys just in terms of reps or do you? Yeah. Yes. I mean, we try to push them as much as we can, but not be, you know, dumb about it. And then you don't have them for a day or two because they're, you know, sore or whatever it is. Uh, but we try to do that with all of our guys. You know, we, we've got the catapult GPS monitoring. We have, you know, a rep count. You know, we're pretty, you know, detailed in exactly going into a practice and then coming out of a practice and counting. You know, it guy gets dinged up. He's over here. Now you got to flip the reps around. So. We're pretty detailed, and every guy, not to put too much of a workload on them, but get as much out of them as we can, too. So, so yeah, we do that with everybody. How long have you known Coach Key, and, and why did you, you come join this journey with him? Um, let's see. I've known Coach Key since probably late December. Met him a few times. Didn't really know him that well. Um, Chris Winkie and I coached together at Tennessee, uh, and so that was kind of the connection to, you know, to, to getting here. Why did I want to come? To, you know, when I when I first list people that know him, that know me, um, were very similar in a lot of ways. And then whenever we talked on the phone, it probably took 30 seconds, you know, to where I was like, okay, if this works out, I think I, I'm pretty sure that's where I'd like to go work because, you know, we spend a lot of time here, a lot of time away from our families, uh, really a lot, a lot more time with each other than our families. But you have to enjoy the people you're around, okay? and it makes a big difference in that. And this is a great place. Place is going on, going in the right direction with him in charge, uh, and I'm excited about it. And then not just Coach Key, but the rest of the staff. We've got a great coaching staff, great people, okay? great families, and and that was that was evident through him. And then as I did research on the people that are in the building, so uh, it's important to me. I'm not old, old, but I'm older, so I look at the people I work with a lot of times in the places more than I look at, you know, all the other parts that are kind of involved in this business. I asked Coach Key about this yesterday. I'll ask you, you guys have um, some sports staff guys, like you work with Bill Stewart, mm -hmm. like who are these veteran coaches, maybe at different levels yeah. and stuff. Just what is that kind of, how does that help you as a coach? And, and what do those guys bring to the table? You know, I actually, did something similar to what Bill is doing now. I was a high school coach. I was I was younger than what Bill is, but I, I went in as player development, kind of was groomed as a coach, and then had the opportunity to go onto the field and all that. Um, it's been great because it gives another mature mind in there that has been around a lot of really good football. And it's not like you know, I mean, Bill Bill could coach linebackers tomorrow and and, and probably look a lot better than what I've been doing, but. Great guy, comes and brings, you know, energy in everything he does. Uh, he's been a huge asset, you know, and there's some program things that he's trying to, you know, involve himself in and figure out, you know, and then there's a lot of people in that case because it's kind of Coach Key's thought process. Um, but he's been great. You know, he's done an outstanding job. Guys like him, you know, and like I said, he brings a lot of energy. Wish I had some of his energy, you know. Okay, there's nothing else. Anything in the back? Good. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate, appreciate y'all. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Awesome. Appreciate it. Yeah. Sure if you need that water too or something. Uh, appreciate I it. I wouldn't drink the Diet Coke. <laughs> nah, I ain't going to drink that. <laughs> I don't want that one. Right. Okay.
Camera's ready. We'll go ahead and get started with Trinidad Stadium. Rod, if you want to get started. You had a, a couple of games last group where you had a chance to start, you know, when Charlie was out was targeting. Uh, how did that help you in your development, you know, and, and instead of coming in for a play here or a play there, that type of thing? Uh, it gave me a lot of more time on the field. Um, that's, that's the goal, you know, so being there, taking over the first half, it gave me a lot of, you know, a lot of steps in, in the defense. It gave me a lot of uh, time to prepare myself. And, you know, so, I mean, that, that was a lot. Go. Coach Shearer talked a little bit about you kind of maturing and, and also maturing your body as well. Just kind of what all has gone into that that maturation process for you? Uh, just watching the, the ones in front of me, like like you said, Charlie and Ace, just watching them come in every day, take care of themselves, take care of the business. So, like, knowing that I'm up this year, knowing that they're gone, knowing that I got a big responsibility, that's all that means a lot to me. So, that's where that come from. Chad? Oh, along those same lines, I mean, do you look up this fall and think, man, I'm like the only one left yeah. <laughs> from from the veteran team? I know you got some older guys in the room, but is it – are you having to be kind of a coach out there and show pretty much everybody where to go and, and what to do? Uh, not not pretty much a coach, but for the young guys, um, just letting them know where to be at, um, where to align, where to just the little things. You know, everybody, the coach gonna coach them, but you know, I just I just there to you know be a good teammate. I'm just letting them know like with everything that the older guys did to me. I'm just I'm just relying that down. So that's it. Right. There's a good chance that you'll be playing beside maybe one of the transfers. Uh, what what can you tell us about those three guys? You know, what have you seen from them? Uh, with Dre and Braylon coming in in the spring, they gave us a lot to look at. Them being older, they they pretty much had the same mindset as uh, Charlie and Ace. Them being older and coming in and handling business. Then with Paul coming in this summer, really put a lot of depth in the room. It really helped us a lot because not only is he experience but he's an older guy too that that knows what he's doing who 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 comes in with a a, a a pro mindset every day so them having them guys be around with uh we got you know we got a real young room so having them guys with that that, that pro mindset helps all of us so that's that's good that's cool. you know behind the three transfers and yourself the room gets young pretty fast what's it like now Kind of being one of the older, more experienced guys on the team, on the, especially in your room. I ain't gonna lie. It kind of feel weird because I still feel like a young dude, but in the room, I'm definitely an older guy because there's so many young dudes. But uh, I don't think it's too much to handle. Like, like I said, I like being a good teammate, showing them where to be, how to, you know, how to come by today, how to, you know. So it's good. Been good. Anything else for Trinidad's? Anything in the back? Rob. Uh, you have a new linebacker coach now. Uh, do you notice any differences in coaching style, that type of thing? Yeah, uh, not really a difference, but Coach Sheridan, he going to come with it every day. Like, he going to come with that aggressiveness. Like, he, he comes with it every day. So, uh, not, not really a difference. I don't see no difference. I feel like we all come to work every day with the same. And new. we all come to work. But he do come with that aggression that, you know, we need. So... He brings it. He brings it every day. He ain't gonna miss. It. Yeah. Anything else? Appreciate you, buddy. Appreciate y'all. Thanks for Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Ready for Paul? Okay. Uh, introducing, I guess, everybody to Paul Mawala. Uh, we'll go ahead and open it right for questions for Paul. Kelly. I guess can you just kind of tell us the story of how you ended up at Georgia Tech? Yeah. So uh, actually, out of high school. I'm from a, a little area close to South Bend, Indiana. I uh, went to a camp out there at Notre Dame. Uh, my senior year, ended up getting offered. So I ended up just uh, going to the University of Notre Dame for four years. Um, ended up tearing both of my Achilles tendons my junior and senior year. Um, and kind of just was looking for a new school. Um, just with the you know new recruits coming in, they need to make some cap space for you know younger guys. So. Um, that fifth year, I was just looking for you know any school that would take me, and you know thankfully the University of Idaho out in Moscow um, reached out to me, and I ended up there for a year, um, 
and just played there for a season, uh, played pretty well. Um, and then uh, just wanted to, you know, play a, a little bit higher level of ball. So I ended up um, entering the transfer portal, had a few offers, and I decided on Georgia Tech. So. Rod, you talked about the three schools you've been at now. Do you notice any big differences between the three? Or, I mean, how does Georgia Tech fit in with uh, what, what you were doing before you came here? Just as uh, far as, like, the scheme or just, like, yeah, I mean, institution? Yeah. How they go about their business with practice and, and everything out, you know, off the field also. Uh, that's say my biggest thing is just understanding that football is football no matter where you go. Um, and how you play is, is, you know, how people see, you know, how you are as a football player. So I'm truly grateful to, you know, the University of Notre Dame and, and the University of Idaho and just the opportunities that they granted me. Um, and honestly, I wouldn't be here at Georgia Tech without those two schools. So um, I, I wouldn't say there's necessarily any difference. Um, like I said, just football is football. And um, as I get older, I'm understanding that I need to take it a little bit more serious. So um, I've kind of seen um, a little bit more production out of myself um, as I've gotten older. So. Chad? Mm -hmm. well, detail on what you've all just been through, I would imagine the motivation level is pretty high this year, knowing, I mean, this is it. You've got to you know, put it all out there in your final year. Yeah? Yeah, final for final. sure. Um, just, you know, with my story um, by the, and by the grace of God, I just wanted to, you know, just go till I couldn't go anymore. And so... Uh, being granted this opportunity, honestly, just uh, kind of opened my eyes to, you know, God's plan for what he wants for me. And so I'm kind of just taking it with a grain of salt and, and going as far as I can go, as, uh, as far as my body will let me. So, When you looked at what they did defensively, do you view yourself as like a guy that maybe could replace some of the production like Charlie Thomas had in terms of being a racer guy that can run sideline to sideline? You were a safety, I think, in high school, right? Yep, and yep. So you bring a little bit more of that athleticism piece. Is that kind of how you see yourself fitting in? Uh, yeah, definitely. We, but, um, you know, as you look at that linebacker group, you see that there's a lot of guys like that. Um, uh, we just got a young group. But, you know, with the transfers that we brought in, like Braylon and, and Andre, um, obviously Trent, um, Austin Dean, and, you know, Eford and just Tyson, all those guys really, um, they're all, you know, going to live up to that expectation of, of filling in that role of um, those two, you know, guys that have uh, made a name for themselves out here. So um, as far as I am, uh, like how I view myself on this defense, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a big part of my decision. Um, I definitely thought that the potential that I could uh, offer to this team was, was uh, something that I really valued. So I kind of wanted to come out here and um, just use the talents that I've been blessed with to the best of my ability. So. Uh, Coach Thacker uh, goes out there and coaches with a lot of enthusiasm, likes to run around. Does that help you as a player to stay engaged during practice? Definitely, and I think it uh, brings some juice and energy to the guys, especially, you know, practicing at 2 p.m. It gets a little hot out there. Guys get a little groggy. So, um, you know, the whole staff all around just continues to bring energy, and it helps us a lot um, in trying to execute well um, in that heat. So, Kelly? I guess it brings up an interesting question. What is the difference? Like, in camp, I imagine camp's way different than it was in South Bend or in, in Moscow. Like, just how different is the, the temperatures and the humidity and all that? Yeah, I'd say uh, pretty different, just uh, especially since we kind of practiced in the mornings at both of those other schools. So we kind of got things out the way in the morning. And if we did practice outside, it was a little cooler. Um, it's definitely a big change out here, um, practicing in the afternoon and kind of testing that mental strength, but I like it a lot just because it kind of allows you to uh, get the worst of it so that when it comes game time, you're prepared for it. So, you know. Anything else for Paul? Paul, thank you. Bud. Appreciate it. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you, guys. Thank you.